Good morning, Faith family. How are we today? Happy Monday. Ah, it's good to be outside, isn't it? <clears throat> uh, just a reminder that today starts our one devotion per day, Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. Then you can watch it all throughout the day. Now, I've been outside here for about 20 minutes with no wind at all. And now the wind has picked up just a touch. But you know what? We're going to plow through this and get through it. So let's begin with some prayer. Just come, Holy Spirit. Just say, come. Father, make your presence known. Lord, as we open up your word, may, may we experience you through that as well. So Holy Spirit, would you come? Give us direction. Give us wisdom as we go through your word today. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning again. It's great to see everybody. Another reminder quickly that we are going to one devotion per day. And that starts today. And it'll be at 10 a.m and um, you'll have all day to watch it. So, um, yeah, so you get to see me every Monday. Happy day. What, we're really, what's not to like about that? I'm just kidding, just kidding. So I wanna talk today, I wanna kinda, on Mondays, for a couple Mondays, I wanna talk about outreach and what that might look like. Um, but before we even get into that, I kinda wanna do some backdrop. A little bit of backdrop on that because our purpose statement um, <clears throat> here at River Heights is helping a growing number of people love God love people and change the world and that's what we want to do that's what we're about and so I want to be about that as well being the new guy on staff I obviously I love God definitely love God I love people oh my gosh so emotional this past weekend getting to meet in person. I can't wait to see all of us in person. That'll be even better, even more emotional. And the whole part of changing the world, I want to be a part of that too. I, I so want to be a part of that. And it makes me think of um, Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1, and what I want to look at today is verses 4 through 8. Now this is after the 40, after the resurrection um, Jesus went around and saw hundreds of people for 40 days. And now we are with him and his disciples in Jerusalem. And um, I just want to kind of, I want to read through this and then we're going to talk a little, bit, a little bit about what this all, you know, what this means for us. So this is Jesus. Once he, being Jesus, once he was eating with them, that's the disciples. So once he was eating with them, he commanded them, do not leave Jerusalem until the Father sends you the gift he promised. As I told you before, John baptized with water, but in just a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So the gift that he is, is being given to him is the, to them is the Holy Spirit, which is going to be to us as well. So he's giving them, he's saying, stay in Jerusalem until all this takes place. You will know, basically saying, you're going to know what's up. So when the apostles were with Jesus, they kept asking him, Lord, has a time come for you to free Israel and restore our kingdom? And Jesus replied, The Father alone has the authority to set those dates and times, and they are not for you to know. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And so that's kind of what I want to talk about this morning is, what does that look like? I mean, that's a lot of places, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, ends of the earth. What does that look like in that context compared to ours? In that context, Jerusalem was in the middle or in Judea, in the middle of Judea. Judea. So Judea was a country. Then you've got Samaria, which is just to the north of Judea. Now, if you remember, Samaritans, Jew, Jews and Samaritans did not go together at all at all and so for Jesus to say that is a big deal but you've got Jerusalem the city 
Judea, the country, Samaria, surrounding country, ends of the earth, expanded and blown up even beyond that. And so what does that look like for us? What does that look like today? Because we have the Holy Spirit now. We have the power. We have the, God has given us the resources to go do this, to go preach the resurrection of Jesus to people and the good news of the gospel to the people. That's to change the world. So what does that look like for us? Well, if you think about it, we've got River Heights. So we're in River Heights, we're training, we're doing things. Then we, then we expand out to Invergrove Heights. Then we expand out even further to West St. Paul, South St. Paul, uh, Cottage Grove. Where else? Yeah, every. And then it just keeps expanding. And so it's like a ripple effect. It's like you drop a little pebble, like boom, here's the gospel right at River Heights. Ripple effect, Invergrove, ripple effect. South St. Paul, ripple effect, West St. Paul, Cottage Grove. You see where I'm getting at? So that's where we're at. That's where that's at. Now, how about personally, what does that look like? How about the gospel planted in your home? That's one drop. Now, the ripple effect goes out into your neighborhood. Then how about your workplace? I mean, it, it can expand out to so many different places. Don't, you know, a whole section of your city even. So this isn't just a church, river, heights, building, whatever. We're going to come to the building all the time. It's all about us, you and me as well, where we're at in our neighborhoods. I live in Lakeville. So my goal is my cul-de-sac that I live in and talk to them, then even more, expand out even more neighbors like that. And then maybe to part of the, the high school, up to the high school where my kids are gonna go to school in the fall. So I mean, it expands out even further for me personally. And then you put all those little dots and ripple effects together pretty soon, they're all touching and intertwining. And people are hearing the gospel and saying, what is happening? What is going on? And then they come to the epicenter River Heights <clears throat> or your house you know that's how that's how home churches get started that's how life groups um, expand and grow and grow and grow because the gospel is being preached people want to hear good news especially today so I would encourage you so as we here in the next few Mondays anyway um, we're going to talk through kind of some some thoughts and ideas about what this looks like to change the world and change the world around us. And how does that work? I just want us to know up front that it says here in Acts chapter 1 that God has given us the Holy Spirit. And it sounds like pretty much that's all we need. <laughs> I mean, if you really think about it, we just need the Holy Spirit. We have the gospel. We have the tools. We have the gospel. We have a mouth, and now let's go tell the world. I, I love that. Um, Paul later on talks about how Apollos watered, um, and you know, God makes things grow. So there's different aspects to this whole process. You know, River Heights plant the seed, you water it, but God will make it grow. And that's the thing is God's going to make it grow. God's going to go. And, and if nobody says it, the Bible says that even the rocks will cry out. So I'd rather us cry out instead of having a rock cry out. Wouldn't you agree? So guys, my challenge today is just to really start thinking through and praying about um, how do we change the world around us? How do we begin the process of changing the world around us and allowing God to use us with our neighbors, our friends, our friend groups? Um, we're six degrees of separation from a, being across the world probably. So guys, just think that through. I think that's gonna be a serious thing for us to really look at here in the coming months is to really how do we, how do we affect those around us? How do we bring good news to those around us and help those people share the good news as well? 
Acts 1, verses 4 through 8. God's given us the Holy Spirit, and we are his witnesses. Let's, let's pray. Holy Spirit, we just thank you for your power. We thank you for your love for us, and that will go through us as we share your gospel. You're an amazing God, and we love you so much. We can't even begin to love you more than you love us. But Holy Spirit, we know you give us the power and the strength to do what you called us to do, and that's share the good news. So go with, the, go with us today, Lord, um, and the rest of the week, and we just thank you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Guys, thanks for letting me share with you this morning. Um, can't wait to do some outreaching and do some things like that. So we'll talk about more of that, more about that next Monday. Um, until then, we have tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Guys, God bless. Have a great morning.